Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this rather simple video, I will show you how you can implement multi-selection lazy columns in Jetpack Compose. In XML, that was always quite difficult for a rather simple problem. In Jetpack Compose, that's of course a lot easier. So you can see, we can just pick any items here and just toggle the selection. And then whatever you want to do with that. Mm, so in an empty Compose project, we first want to declare a container class for these items. So on the root package, new Kotlin class called a list item, a data class, and that will just contain a val title, and it will contain a boolean whether this item is selected or not. Back in main activity, we can then uh, initialize an initial list here with this, with these list items. So var items will be, let's take the numbers 1 to 20 and we map these to simple list items. Make sure to choose the list item that we just created. We can choose the title and set it to item and whatever number we are currently at. And we want to set is selected to false initially. So initially none of our items are actually selected. To actually consider updates in this list and to display that in our UI, we actually need to make this list a state. So we need to actually cut this out and say remember by remember um, actually. So this one say mutable state of and here in mutable state of we simply paste this we need to make sure that we import get value and mutable state off here, pressing Alt plus Enter. Enter, and when these white underlines appear, we need to press Alt plus Enter again, click Import, and then the errors will be gone. Then, below that state declaration, we want to declare our lazy column. The modifier will be modifier, the compose one here, import that fill max size and then in here we can actually declare the different items we have so we have an items block how many items do we have well as many as we have in our list so items.size we then get the index here so i the yeah, which item that is actually and with that we can basically just create a row that has a text on the left side and the check mark on the right side so row using a modifier of fill max width. We want to have a clickable modifier here because if we want to click on that row, then uh, the, the corresponding item should be toggled. And then after that clickable modifier, we add some padding of 16 dp. Import dp. We will implement the clickable stuff at the end. We set the horizontal, um, oops, that's the wrong place. Actually here. Um, the horizontal arrangement to space between that will just accomplish that here the check mark and the item are both um, pushed to the left and right edges of our item of our row and we want to make sure that we center it vertically so vertical alignment is centered vertically and we can format that a bit then inside of that row we will have our simple text where we will display the corresponding text values, so items at the index of i dot title. And if that specific item is actually selected, we want to show an icon, which is basically our checkmark icon. So uh, icon, the icon composable, the image vector will be icons dot default dot check. Let's um, put that onto their own lines. So for the content description, I will just pick, I don't know, selected. We want to set the tint of that to color.green and the modifier to modifier.size, setting it to 20 dp. So that is already it for the simple setup, except for the toggle stuff that we will put in here. So we just have a lazy column and for each item in our list, we will have such a row. And in that row, we have a text, this place the title, just for demonstration here. 
The important part is if that item is actually selected, we display that icon, uh, that checkmark icon in our UI. Now, how do we toggle this? We just go in here and clickable and we say items is equal to items.map. So we actually map the list to a, new, uh, to a new list. And now in that map function, we need to find the specific icon we actually clicked on for which we can use this index. And here we actually then need map index. So we also get access to the index value of that map function. So all that will really do is it will loop over our list and take the existing icons and map them to something else. You will see how that works. We will pass J here for the index of the map function and our item. And then we can check if I is equal to J. So that means we found the item in our items list that we actually clicked on because that and that index matches. In that case, we want to match that specific icon. Uh, we want to map that to itself, but we copy and change the is selected boolean. So we actually just want to toggle the boolean and leave the rest unchanged. So here we just say item is selected and that toggled. So all copy will really do is it will create a copy of the existing item and then whatever values we change in this block will be changed for that copy. And else we will just return the item as it is. So we really only want to change the single item that we find when uh, the indexes actually match. And that is already it. We can launch our app and try that out. I don't think I missed anything. Let's open our emulator here. That is still the old version. Okay, let's take a look. And yep, that's working. We can select and unselect our items. And in case you actually want to then pass the list to another screen or so with only the selected items, all you really need to do is you need to take this item state and say items.filter it is selected. So with that you will actually get only the selected items of your list and you can then do whatever you like with these. That's it for this simple tutorial. I hope you liked it. If it did help you then you will definitely also love my newsletter, my email newsletter, which is free. You can subscribe to that using the link down below. You will get regular Android, Kotlin, architectural advice right into your inbox. So definitely don't miss that and I wish you an excellent day. See you in the next video again. Bye bye.